would be if I was to ask you, how are you recovering? For us all, the past few months have been far from normal and we've had to adjust to a new way of living. In more recent weeks, there have been small changes which have allowed us to carefully do more, see others, visit different places, and some of the things that we're more used to have been able to happen again. Perhaps being able to go to a family or friend's house has helped your recovery, or maybe being able to enjoy a coffee or a meal in a cafe or restaurant has helped to restore a small amount of normality. It's hard for us to adjust, and of course there are still things that we must do differently, such as wearing face masks, regular washing and sanitising of our hands, and keeping our distance from others. I've particularly seen how this time has impacted and requires adjustments when I look at our little two-year-old boy, Archie. I've seen how he's had to build up his confidence and trust in others. When seeing friends or family for the first time in a long time, there's been times when he's been very shy and it's taken a few minutes of standing by the garden gate or even sitting with his eyes closed before he's been able to feel more confident around people. It's interesting to watch how when we're out for a walk and he sees someone coming towards us, he automatically stands to one side of the path with his hands firmly behind his back. I wonder how long it will be before he doesn't feel like he needs to do this anymore. I've also experienced how he's had to learn to share again, particularly with his much-loved cousin Rory. After months of having his own toys and playing by himself or just with Nathan and I, He's had to try to understand what it means to allow someone else to have access to what now more than ever feel like his toys. It's required us to reteach him the value of sharing and taking turns, and to help him to understand that he must consider others too. I think we've still got a little way to go with this, but for us, this has been part of our recovery. Over the last few weeks before the schools broke up for the summer, and following the government announcement that all children would return to school in September, I spent a significant amount of my time at work, working alongside the rest of the leadership team in considering what coming back to school would look like for the children. Along with many other schools, we've recognised the need for there to be a recovery curriculum which acknowledges the losses that children have experienced whilst they've been away from school, which for some of them has been since March. In considering this recovery curriculum, we've explored some theory and research by Professor Barry Carpenter, CBE, who is a professor of mental health education. The articles which he has written rightfully state that it would be naive of us to return to school and pick up the curriculum at, this, at the same point that the children left off, and that we need to listen to what the children are saying now and look at where, what the children are experiencing at this point. He talks about how the common thread that runs through the current lived experiences of our children is loss. And from loss emanates three significant dynamics that will impact majorly on the mental health of children, these being anxiety, trauma and bereavement. When talking about loss, Professor Barry Carpenter isn't just referring to bereavement that some children may have no doubt experienced during this time, but instead he outlines five losses of routine, structure, friendship, opportunity, and freedom. I'm sure if we all consider those five elements we can identify our own losses within each one. On the flip side, I'm sure we can also identify our gains of the last few months of this year. I certainly am grateful for additional quality time with my family, time to enjoy some beautiful weather and opportunities to explore new places on walks to name just a few. When we consider our losses, we may begin to get bogged down, not being able to attend our church as we normally would, missing the opportunity to interact and share fellowship with each other, adjusting to a lack of routine or a new routine when we're, where we're unable to go to our normal places, groups or clubs. 
I recently read in a resource that's been produced by the Church of England um, for schools, um, something that said, Christians, just like every human being, have times of great sadness and worry. This is not confined to moments of death, but wider traumatic experiences of loss that our communities experience, requiring us to find perspective and reimagine our futures wisely. Inviting Jesus to walk alongside us as individuals and as communities through this can bring real courage and comfort. Although faith wavers, his love remains constant. The Christian narrative invites us to imagine ourselves as passing through a world of darkness and sorrow in the presence of God who journeys with us, even when we pass through the valley of the shadow of death, as it says in Psalm 23 verse 4. This reminded me of the importance of having Jesus not just as part of our recovery, but at the centre of our recovery. Romans chapter 8 verse 11 says, And it is the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. In this verse, Paul is telling us that as believers, we have that very same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead living inside of us. This verse assures us that we have victory in Christ. Whatever our recovery may need to look like following our experiences this year, we must understand the need to fix our eyes on him and understand that we have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead living inside of us. And this spirit has provided for us to operate in that very same power. Our time at home may have caused us to become very inward looking. It may have made us lethargic, too comfortable, lacking motivation and energy. How then are we going to begin to recover and rebuild our relationships or sense of community and togetherness and rediscover our drive, passion and purpose? Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. In other translations of the verse, the word wait is used instead of hope. I think it's important for us to consider both of these words. We've done a lot of waiting. We've been waiting for the next announcement, waiting for the next opportunity, waiting to be allowed. How have you been waiting on the Lord? Waiting isn't easy. Most people don't like waiting, but when we wait, God strengthens us. I've heard an illustration about how God strengthens us during times of waiting through trials, and I'm sure others of you will have heard this too. The illustration outlined an eagle uh, and that it knows when a storm is approaching long before it breaks. The eagle will fly to a high spot and wait for the winds to come. When the storm hits, it sets its wings so that the wind will pick it up and lift it above the storm. While the storm rages below, the eagle is soaring above it. The eagle doesn't escape the storm, it simply uses the storm to lift it higher. It rises on the winds that bring the storm. When the storms of life come upon us, we can rise above them by setting our minds and our belief towards God. The storms do not have to overcome us. God will strengthen us during our times of waiting. His power will lift us up above the dark clouds so we can ride the winds of the storm that brings sickness, tragedy, failure and disappointment in our lives. So what about hope? I don't know about you, but I really love this word. I love the positivity that it radiates. If for you the word wait doesn't fill you with positivity, and if you're like me, a little impatient, consider the word hope. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Hope is a discipline. A determination to believe in God's reality and power. Hope is powerful. We can experience loss, whether this be bereavement or the losses that I previously mentioned of friendship, structure, routine, opportunity or freedom. But still we can hope. Still we can know that Jesus is at the centre and he will provide all we need. We must practice this hope 
and with its power we will overcome all things. So how are you recovering? Have you made Jesus the central element of your recovery? Maybe you haven't considered that you needed to recover. Wherever you may be, whatever you are feeling, and whatever your situation or circumstance, I pray you will wait upon the Lord. And I pray that you will hope upon the Lord. And through this, he will give you strength to move beyond your losses. And that you will be able to walk, run, and soar, renewing your strength in him. They will rise up with wings as eagles.